dirtier than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's the Miata been? So, it's been a while. We gave the Miata away, we did the drawing. The Miata was won by somebody local actually. And to be honest, I couldn't part with it. So I offered it to buy it back and we made a deal. We bought the Miata back, but it wasn't done. We weren't finished with the car yet. I, one, I felt bad giving somebody an unfinished car and I didn't know how long it was gonna to take to get finished. So, where is it at now? As you saw in the last video, if you've been watching, we brought it to Ultima Raceworks and they are going through the car, finishing it, making sure that everything that we did was safe. They found a couple things. So right now we're gonna go see Ben at Ultima Raceworks and we're gonna to talk to him and go through what he actually did because it's running and it's ready to go. Dude, how are you doing? Good to see ya. Watch out, Paul. See you, man. Do it. Um, give me like two minutes, I'll grab James and uh, cool. me and you will go over it. Got anything you need to show me in the shop? Hey, how are you? So good to see you again. Cool, let's check it out. How's it going? Good, man, how are you doing? Good. All right, a year and a half ago, we bought a 1997 Mazda Unos Roadster, right-hand drive from Japan. And this was a project car with Chicago Auto Pros and the guys, and it ended up taking a lot longer than it should have, but it's finally done. We did a case swap on it, we did a manual swap on it, we repainted it, wide body, new suspension, the whole nine yards. We actually have new wheels coming. These aren't the wheels that are gonna be on there. But when we first originally took it to the dyno, it got 84, 85 horsepower, 85 horsepower! That was not, very much horsepower. So we did all this and now we're at Ultimate Raceworks. We're about to put it on the dyno after all of some of our hard work, mostly Ultimate Raceworks. They really went through it and got this thing safe for us and went through it and uh, I appreciate what they did and, and you know fixed a lot of the stuff that we didn't do right. Finally, it's gonna be on the dyno. Let's see what it pulls now. Any guess on horsepower? Any guess? Yeah, what do you, what do you think? I hope it's over 200. Just. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is over 200 though. Okay. I was gonna go 203. <laughs> <laughs> Take some bets. What do you guys think? I'm not gonna tell you the exact number, but just over 200. Just over 200. I'm standing strong at 203. Uh, well, if it's just over 200, uh, 208. Okay. We'll see. 207. 207. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> My guess is on numbers. What do you think it did? I'm still 203. 203? 220. Oh, fuck. 220! Yeah. <laughs> nice! <laughs> 176 torque. Pretty good. That's awesome. That's actually really good okay. on a Mustang Dyno. Yeah? Like, seriously good for this engine, yeah. Wow. What's that, like 260 or 70 on a on a dyno jet? Maybe not that much, but uh, maybe 8% eight, eight more. On a Honda shop dyno jet? <laughs> yeah, maybe, right? <laughs> maybe. Let's just play with these corrections a little bit. Exactly. No, but that's, uh, it's dialed in, man. You want to do uh, one more pull? Might as well, it's warm. Yeah? That's just shy of under, so I can take it up. Cool. Let's do it. Two. 
Yeah, you're picking up power. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to a thousand. What do you What do you notice that's different? I know it's been a while, so let's see how your your memory serves you. It's dirtier than I remember. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> we have like three street miles on it, so I doubt it. That looks a lot better. The issue was actually up here where it was hitting the rack. So pan was modified, chopped up, re-welded, and uh, no longer wow, contacting. Wow, the whole thing is. Did you? No, no, that, we, just, that, just that one section. Uh, we, we took a section out. The uh, so and then mostly up here. Uh, wow. So it's not touching anywhere up there anymore. But you didn't think the rack was gonna work. There, there. Yeah. Yep, there was. And he's, got ah. the, and he's got the wax crayon mark on it. <laughs> fuel lines. Fuel lines. Yeah, fuel lines before the fuel filter was mounted okay. right here. Fuel filter is now back yeah, here. Yeah. So uh, it was hanging down below the frame rail. Yep. Um, and that's just, I mean, you can see that this is rubbed on the ground before. Oh, yeah. Um, and you don't want that to happen again with a fuel filter yeah. in that exact place. Like I said, oh, this is new. Really yeah, so uh, we'll start from the front work back. Okay. Uh, this portion of the uh, exhaust, this hanger was useless. Uh, it was uh, sitting like right there, like, yeah. I don't know, half an inch away from the factory hanger on the chassis. Um, and you couldn't fit a, fit a bushing in there at all. Yeah. Um, so totally useless. Um, and the way these rear hangers are laid out, they're all facing the same direction. Right. Uh, so when you drive the car, the whole muffler would start swaying back and forth and contacting both sides of the bumper mm. out of the outlet. Um, with us having a flex section up there, uh, we were able to add a solid mount. Um, and that will prevent any, uh, any kind of movement back here. From there, rerouted, uh, like you know, fuel lines. So there's the there's the filter right there. Yep. Um, had to modify the bracket for it. Uh, Reran all the lines, uh, all the power cables uh, before they were I think P clamped or something like that to this to this rail here. Uh, now they're uh, routed properly uh, along the power plant frame. Uh, added some more engine grounds. Uh, I think there was one before and it was pretty mediocre. Had the trans out. Uh, it stuck detents. So basically, uh, you couldn't find any gear because there's nothing to center it. You know, there's a spring and a ball to center the shifter, mm -hmm. and uh, there's nothing center it, centering it at all. Um, oh, wow. Yep, reverse lockout was stuck. Um, is that just because of the transmission? or is that You said it was a used unit. Who yeah. knows the history on it? Um, yeah. It was just all corroded, seized up, and uh, yeah, a little bit of. Cleaning and uh, we got it for free. So <laughs> thanks, Jimmy. That helps. I actually had a bundle of wires around here too. Yeah, yeah there was there was a big bundle of wires that was tucked up there before, and uh, it was just like all hanging right here, basically. What were they for? Like I think it's from uh, from the other harness. That you had. Okay, they were just so, extra. Yeah, it was extra. the auto training. Yeah. yeah, there was. Yeah, we knew so that we there was extra. All that for you. You know what I'm Thank you. Uh, one of the brake lines were twisted, so uh, it's like someone twisted the caliper 180 degrees and then bolted yeah. it on. I think it was this rear or front right. Okay. Um, but that's uh, that's perfectly fine now. Oh, so. and then the caliper mounting bolts. Uh, yes. Too short as well. Yep. There was yep. one missing too. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, you can see the tap's no longer there. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing you notice. Right. <laughs> so you you mark it, and that means it's torqued. You, you yeah, torque you mark. Um, so if the bolt were to ever move, uh, yeah. that wax would flake off. Uh, gotcha. and, and you know, okay. so a quick visual inspection of everything, and yeah. you can know what's moved. Um, we didn't do anything on the top side in the engine bay because it's, okay. uh, it's a show yeah. car for you guys. Right. Didn't want to make it look too gaudy, but underside of the car, uh, you know, it's all function. You've got some final touches to make, but mechanically, I think you're, yeah. I think you're totally set. At least it's turnkey. You can drive it in and out of the shop every day. Yeah. High temp brake fluid, some Hawk brake pads. Uh, they're just the street brake pads, so they'll hold up to some track work, uh, but not a, not a ton. Um, I know one of the concerns concerns was dust and noise. Yeah. Uh, so these will be pretty quiet for you. Cool. But yeah. All right. it's, uh, I think it turned out awesome. Excellent. So, yeah. Let's lower it back down. All right, let's get you paid and get this fucking thing out of here. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Battery's tied down now too. Before it was just floating around the trunk. Yeah. I think I did order something for that. I think we touched, uh, covered all the bases here. There's uh, still plenty for you guys though. So here's a, a box full of your old fuel lines, old parts. Okay. And then here's that battery mount you guys supplied. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, battery's mounted solid. It's like it's part of the car. So nice. It shouldn't yeah, tumble. Yeah, there was literally and... poke outs here when we got it. Oh, from it hitting? From the battery yeah. hitting the side, yeah. yeah. Super common. Yeah. Good to All go. Right. Let's get this thing pulled out and... Uh, Let's go drive in traffic. I've had a couple of... Yeah, <laughs> it's in traffic, right? Perfect timing. This 
baby's fun. She rides nice mechanically. It's fantastic. We got some work to do. We got to fit the hood, number one. Uh, the valve cover sits a little high. Got to cut some stuff out, figure out how that's going to fit together. Some little bits and bobs on the interior that we got to put back together. We got to finish the audio system. We have new wheels on the way. I can't wait. Hopefully new wheels that actually fit properly and look good with the wide body kit. Um, we're almost there and then we're just going to enjoy this thing. So make sure that you uh, come follow us and we're going to have it out at a bunch of shows here in Chicago. And I can't wait for you guys to see it.